Hello, 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 and what is going on, everybody? It is Master of GDS, and I am here with my lovely wife, Riding Raven. And we're back for another episode of Psycho Synopsis. Yay! The segment where we basically analyze all the psychos for you. You're welcome. That pretty much sums it up, yes. which is what we're doing. Exactly. Anyways, we have a couple interesting stories uh, to cover today. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, we're just going to jump straight in. All right, then. Then let us begin with our first topic, Captain Marvel 2, The Marvels. Okay, so as everybody knows, Captain Marvel 1 was a big point of contention with the fan with the Marvel fan base, I guess. Meh. Uh, in a sense where uh, they made it, they marketed it like you had to go see it in order to understand Endgame, and you really didn't. You really and, did not at all. Yeah, and they ruined... Um, Nick Fury. Yeah, they ruined Nick Fury. That was the one part everybody hated. And a couple, a bunch of other things. Now, of course, there was some controversy with Rotten Tomatoes and all the other places, you know, dealing with this kind of stuff. And it's really, really stupid because mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that Disney thought this out very well. Um, no, they don't think anything out well. Captain Marvel did well, I guess, but like it only did well because of the placement. But its placement, yeah. and they're. Continuing on with the sequel, but I'm guessing that because a lot of people don't like Brie Larson for multiple reasons. Oh, yeah. Valid reasons. Because she's not a very likable person. To be not honest. at all. And I mean, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe she's a likable person in person, you know, if I were to meet her. But I don't. From what I'm basing my, my opinion of her on is what I've heard, and it doesn't sound very good. Regardless, it seems like Disney may be second-guessing things as well. Because instead of naming Captain Marvel 2, they changed the name of the you know, Captain Marvel 2 to The Marvels, which it, will allow them to not only avoid mentioning Captain Marvel, but also to bring in Ms. Marvel. And uh, Monica Rambeau. Yeah, and... The original Captain Marvel, unless you count Captain Marvel. I think this is a stupid idea. I don't think this is really going to help them. I it's think that really not. they really shouldn't have announced this until they actually... Look, I'm not a fan of Kamala Khan, a.k.a. Miss Marvel. Neither of us are. Look, I've read the comics. Before anybody gets mad at me about it, I've read them. It's not even worthy of toilet paper. I've read them all, okay? I read them hoping they'd get better. They did not. Now... I'm not saying the show can't be good and whatever, but if I was Disney, I would have waited to see how the show did first before announcing that this was going to be called The Marvels, because if the show tanks, it's not going to necessarily help. Pretty much. But again, uh, I do have some sources around this, and I've heard that hopefully the writers on this are a little better than what we've been hearing. But again, this is just basically a way from what it seems like to me is to still, you know... To bring in more Marvels, and to also not necessarily lead with Captain Marvel 2. Whether this means that Rogue's going to come and knock her on her ass. I hope so. I would really like to see that. Me too. That would be the only reason I would go to see the next Captain Marvel movie. And look, I didn't... It wasn't a terrible movie. But it just was, wasn't a good movie. Yeah, I was really, really bothered with Nick Fury losing his eye to a cat. Last time I trusted somebody, I lost an eye. Turns out it was a cat! Meow. <sighs> Just... I did not like that. I did not like that at all. Long story short, this is either a try to di like diversion thing or a way to try to bring Kamala Khan into this. And look, I do not think Kamala Khan is going to catch on. No. She but, still ha she but, hasn't at all. No, she hasn't. Her comic's been canceled almost as many times as Captain Marvel. But again... Am I willing to see how it goes? Sure. Am I going to watch it? No. So, to me, there's no downside here. Either way, if it's good, we get content. If it's bad, we also get content. Oh yeah, it's a win-win for us. And now we discuss the Native American Captain America. A.K.A. Joe. Honestly, I will say that having a Native American as a Captain America is a good idea. But yeah. the costume is hideous. It feels, looking at it, it looks like an insult to Native American culture. I'm sorry, when I saw it the first time, all I could think of is he looks like a piñata. You're not wrong. He looks like a piñata! Am I wrong? No! With the shoulder pads and the things, he looks like a piñata. If I break him open, will a real Captain America come out? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Blood and guts might. Here's the thing. I have no problem with a Native American Captain America. I just think they could have done, you know, like, for example, they could have brought the character Warpath 
Yeah, mm. made him a Captain America or Thunderbird or one of those other Native American characters that are already in the Marvel Universe. And I get that this was supposed to be kind of a, you know, people inspired by Captain America and yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm sorry. The Who designs these? If he would have darkened the colors a little, he would have made it a darker blue, a little darker red, maybe a gray. Made it more like nature? No, made it less flamboyant. Oh, yeah, It would have looked too. better. Because otherwise, it just... He looks like a bird. He looks like a piñata! I'm sorry, Captain Piñata! No offense to Native Americans! He looks like a target! He actually does. <laughs> but, no, it look, this is the third Captain America-inspired person they've revealed. All and of none them, of them have been very great. Yeah, really. I like the, uh, the concept of having a Native American dressed as Captain America and being a Captain America. But the costume does not work. And I like the idea of Captain America inspiring other heroes mm -hmm. that are, like, similar. But, but their costumes do not work. And also, explain to me this. Just because Captain America inspired the hero, why does that mean that they have to become a Captain America? That's a good point. They don't have to. What I mean, if they were inspired and decided to take in a different direction? I mean, in the comics, isn't Deadpool a fan of Captain America? Yeah. You don't see him dressing up as a, making himself red, white, and Deadpool. <sighs> Anyways, look, this is just to the point where Marvel is literally a laughingstock at this point. Mm -hmm. um, it's they a shame. continue to make themselves look really, really stupid. And they uh, were already looking very stupid before. So. Uh, and now they're just looking stupider. This could have been done right. It could have. If it was done right, that's one thing. But here's the thing. Even with all the backlash, I guarantee what's going to happen is Marvel's not going to change it. They don't care. And yeah, he'll probably appear in this comic, and then I, I guarantee we'll, we'll never, never see, see him, him again. again. Jinx. <laughs> Next, we have the clones in the Bad Batch are too white. Okay, so... Oh, <sighs> They're not white. Every single clone is olive-skinned. Okay. So, here's the issue with this, okay? First off, want to be very clear. Me and my wife did not watch The Bad Batch. We don't have Disney+, Plus, and we will not be getting one since they did what they did to Gina. We have only ever seen the episode in which The Bad Batch was introduced. In The Clone Wars, which we were trying out before all this stuff happened with mm -hmm. Gina. I think we saw the first two episode of episodes of Season 6 of The Clone Wars. And that was, was it. That was bored. So, of course, Lucasfilm has been trying to pander to this invisible fan base they think exists, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. It does not. And now, the same fan base they're claiming to be, you know, virtue signaling towards and trying to pander to is now eating them alive. Oh, yes. Because they're now saying that the Bad Batch looks whiter than that, they did in the Clone Wars. And, and so... The, and the... Re and have a lighter skin tone than the rest of the clones who are all olive skinned because they're all cloned from the same person who had olive skin and wait it gets even better because lucasfilm decided you think lucasfilm would ignore this nope they actually caved they put out this statement about how oh uh we had a problem with the lighting we were trying to make it lighter so we'll tell everybody from now on to make it darker that's not gonna help Lucasfilm, I know this is very hard for you, but here's what, listen very carefully to the words coming out of my mouth. This is what you ignore, but you can't, and I'm telling you, even if you make the, make the lighting darker, this is not going to be done. <laughs> because you're pandering to people who are very, very small minority. I know you think there's a lot more of them, but there's not. Nope. And they will never be satisfied. You can bend the knee till your knee literally goes through the floor, and it will still not be enough for them. It will not. It will never be enough. And again, look, I have personally no interest in the Bad Batch. I haven't heard good things about it, and we have more to discuss about this, which my wife will be taking the oh boy. on that. But again, this is the fan base that you wanted, Lucasfilm. Are you happy? Are you satisfied with what you have chosen? You no? have chosen poorly. Indeed, they have. <laughs> now we're going to move on to a topic that my wife has a lot to say about, and, I'll, and she'll explain why. We're going to talk about the new specifically created female clone named Omega. From the Bad Batch. Yeah, I'm going to let my wife take point on this one. I'll try not to get too angry, because we do try not to get angry on this channel. Yeah, because 
The neighbors don't like when we get very loud. <laughs> True. So basically, Bad Batch has become a virtue signal platform for this first ever canon female clone named Omega, who is in a total who, as we can all tell, is a total Mary Sue, contributes nothing to her team or the story, and is literally just there to be there. And we're not just basing this off of the fact that he's a female. No, this I've read the full Bounding Into Comics article on this character and their entire rundown of the very first episode. And literally all she does is Mary Sue, Mary Sue, Mary Sue the whole freaking time. Hence the thumbnail of this video. Indeed. But uh, basically what they describe that she does is there's a, what's his name? The sniper character? Crosshair. Crosshair. The, who is probably the best sniper in the clone army. Yeah, well, uh, Omega's never shot a blaster before. And suddenly is able to take him out in one shot. Having never shot a blaster before. And when, and when she, she's asked... She sa and when she's asked how she did that, or how she learned to do that, she says, I don't know. I've never shot a blaster before. I guess I got lucky. What? Uh, let me translate for anybody else, any for our listeners. Mary Sue, Mary Sue, Mary Sue, Mary Sue. Mary Sue, Mary Sue, Mary Sue, Mary Sue. Mary Sue. No one likes a Mary Sue, not even or a Gary Stew, which is the male version of a Mary Sue. But there's a reason my wife, though, in particular, is a little bit more upset about this, and I'll, ex I'll let her explain. I have a Star Wars fan fiction on my Wattpad account about the first female clone. It's not Omega. I created my character years before they, Dave Filoni created this one, and. I have it in that well, the way I write my character is respectful to the lore of Star Wars, in which the Kaminoans believed that a female would not be an efficient soldier, which was why they never made female clone troopers. That's just a fact and part of the lore of Star Wars. They are not respecting the lore here when I worked so hard to find a way to, in, to have a female clone in Star Wars. And the way I did it actually makes sense. She was not created purposefully. Her being a female was actually an accident that happened during her cloning. And if you want to know more about that specific story, I will link the story of my on my wife's Wattpad, it's called the Clone Assassin. Mm -hmm. It ha it, it it's only has only, so far only three chapters. But once this got released, I was suddenly inspired to continue the story, and now I'm working on chapter four. So if you are interested in reading a female clone done right, because mine is, um, let us know in the comments. And if you enjoy the story, let me know in the comments on the story or in this video if you want me to continue it. I would really appreciate it. Yeah, and again, this is very something that she got very upset about. It really, know, it really pisses me off. Because here's the thing. We're not against them trying to be diverse or trying to do this stuff. But you have to do it correctly. Which they never do. And that's what bothers me. You have to do it within the bounds of what's already been created. But according to them, canon doesn't matter. No, and I t when I write fan fiction, and I do have quite a few of them, I take the canon and the lore of what I'm writing of the franchise I'm writing about very seriously. I take extra care to do my research into the franchise I'm writing about so that my character so that my original character actually fits well into the story. And my female clone does. And again, uh we have no problem with this stuff being done, but again, they have to do it within the bounds of what's already created. And it is known in the lore that females were not supposed to be made. There were no supposed to be no female clones yeah. because they were not efficient soldiers. Yeah. And that's not being that's sexist. Not, it's not sexist at all. It's based on culture, not sexism, because the Kaminoans are perfectionists when it comes to cloning. Okay, getting a little loud there. We don't I'm, want our neighbors to I'm sorry. To I'm getting very riled up. It's okay. <sighs> it's okay to be passionate about things that you care about. Yes. And this is not something we care about. My wife's work, you know, however, is something we care about. So again, if you would like to check that out, there'll be a link in the description that you can check out. Indeed. Please do. I would really appreciate it. Again, female clone done right. Just saying. Yes. Okay. <sighs> now we move... Speak, still speaking of Disney, we now move on to their recently discovered race training. Yeah, so the reimagined tomorrow... <sighs> Was it a movement or what is it? It's uh, garbage, but we, we get that. But, <laughs> um, 
again, this is a whole program that you, again, a lot of YouTubers already touched on this, but we're going to touch on it as well. It's a thing that's been released. It is an official Disney document. It's been authenticated. And basically, it's a thing to teach white people how to be less racist and uh, not have be white privilege. No, nah, it's like... I have the I have the whole article, and it even here. has like a white privilege checklist where it says how to tell if you have white fragility or white superiority, supremacy, or whatever it is. It's just dumb. This is ridiculous, and it, again, what's the most ridiculous part of this is that it does not surprise me. I am not surprised learning Disney does this. No, because they're stupid. Mm hmm. D Disney, Disney, hi. Hey. Are you listening? I, I know we haven't spoken in a while. Hi. Yeah. You know, um, you might not want to, oh, I don't know. What's the word I'm looking for? Be Ostracize racist. your consumers. And be racist. I want to be very clear. This is specifically for staff. But staff that work or think this particular way are ostracizing consumers. But it's okay. You need to check your white privilege. But if we go film Mulan in concentration camps, that's okay. Apparently. Which is really not. Just saying. And we'll thank them, too. Thank you. Uh, Disney, you're such hypocritical. Dumbasses? I don't understand how people can be this stupid on purpose. Because it's on purpose. It can't be by accident. They literally know people hate this. And they say, oh, we don't care about you fans. We yeah. want this fan base. Disney, the, the fan base you're looking for, this is not the fan base you're looking for. Because it doesn't <laughs> exist. <sighs> it doesn't exist. Who are you catering to? For the majority, the fact that you are always having to explain things and try to tell us how we're wrong, we're not, if you keep having to explain it. Mm -hmm. If you keep having to explain it, it's because you don't have enough people buying your products or doing whatever. This is what you wanted. Are you happy? Now, we get a definite proof that you're doing this kind of stuff, and it doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Yeah. Not even in the slightest. Pretty much. It doesn't surprise me. You people are hypocrites. You don't care about anything. You only care about things when it suits the narrative you're trying to push. And otherwise, you just don't care. Pretty much. We know. We all know you don't care. You're not You've made it very any clear. Yeah. Seriously, Disney, you're not fooling anyone. So you can continue to make reimagining tomorrow and all this stuff. It's BS and everybody knows it's BS. You're not fooling anybody. Seriously, just go back to making children entertainment. Even the people you're pandering to aren't fooled by this. This is not how you do things, Disney. Nope. You know it. We know it. The people you pandering to know it. And guess what? I guarantee you're not going to sell any more Disney princess merch because you you because you have a thing on white privilege. I guarantee mm -hmm. that that's not going to happen. Oh, yeah. So good luck with that. Meh. How about you produce more Cara Dune merch? I think that will sell. Oh, that would be great. But and they're not going to do that. Yep. And speaking of Cara Dune, we have a bonus topic here for you. Indeed. The Gina Carano Bear Girls episode. Yeah. So... As of the time of uploading this, the Gina Carano Bear Girls episode should be airing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, I forget the time off the top of my head. Uh, I think it's 9 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so in case you guys don't know that they are releasing the episode of Gina Carano Bear Girls but behind the scenes and managed to get it to be released. Indeed. Now, of course, Disney couldn't put the name on it. We can't say Gina's name. Not allowed. Is it seriously taboo in Disney? It probably is. I'm sure they would. If they put it on, actually, they'd use asterisks. I don't, I don't get what that new thing is. It's like anybody who says something you don't agree with, you can't spell their names out anymore. So you, you have, have to, to put asterisks in their names as though you're typing out a curse word? Because otherwise, if you say their name three times, they'll appear in a mirror behind you, I guess. Like, but surprise, no one cares. <laughs> But again, so that is coming out. And if you guys don't know already, uh, Gina, shout out to GinaCarano.net. You can check them out. It's a fan-created site for fans of Gina Carano. Mm -hmm. And they are pairing up together with Drunk3PO, the YouTuber Drunk3PO. And they're going to do a watch party. Tomorrow night for this episode. Yeah, and they're actually going to be offering some free merchandise and other stuff like that. Signed by Gina Carano. Yeah, which is great. So 
Uh, we're definitely going to try to be a part of that if we can. Mm -hmm. Depends on work. Yeah. Because uh, I am busy with work. So am I. But again, uh, we're going to try to do that the best we can. But again, I just wanted to let you guys know about it. So you guys should, if you haven't checked out GinaChrono.net, I would suggest you do. If you haven't checked out Drunk 3 po I would suggest you go check that, check him out as well. Mm -hmm. Great guy. Indeed. And again, this is just a nice win for us. And look, do I think this is magically Disney changing their mind? No. No, no it's not. But not again... This is a good thing because there was no reason to not put this out. There yeah. was zero reason. But come on, you can at least put her name on the episode title. No, they can't, honey. They have to put asterisks in there because otherwise it will summon a devil. But we're going to keep other people who have said terrible things. And it's okay, though. We're going to keep those people, but not, not Gina. And because of that, we have to not just get rid of her. We have to unperson her, too. And I doubt she'll see this. But I do want to give a shout out to Gina Carano because uh, she followed me on Twitter today. Woohoo! Which was really nice. Um, so I, I, it blew me away when it happened. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm like... He was constantly reloading his notifications page to see if it was real. Oh, come on. Don't tell me you guys wouldn't do the same. <laughs> but yeah, uh, just I don't think she'll see this, obviously. You never know. But just shout out to her. She's she's a really amazing person. Indeed. One of the nicest celebrities I've ever known. And just thank you for the bottom of my heart for following back. It just means Seriously, so much. Seriously, Gina, we are not worthy. <laughs> All right. Now it's time to jump into the final part of this. The part you've all been waiting for. The diagnosis of the week. Yes, so as a therapist, it is my job, and again, I want to be very clear about this. I am not diagnosing any particular people here, but I am diagnosing the week based on the things that have occurred in it. And this week, I have a very interesting diagnosis that may not seem to fit right away, but I'll explain my reasoning here. Tell us what it is. So my diagnosis of the week is OCD, or Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Please explain why. Now, most people hear of obsessive compulsive disorder. I actually work with a lot of people who have obsessive compulsive disorder, so I'm quite familiar with it. Indeed but most people think about it as, you know, oh, people wash their hands, like things straight. It goes far beyond that. But one of the things that's the standard part of OCD, regardless of whether what focus it's on, is it's about obsessive and persistent behavior. And I would say that Disney meets this criteria because they keep trying and obsessing over diversity and inclusion and they keep doing things or compulsions they feel they need to do not because they want to do mind you they doing it because they feel they need to do it they're compelled to which is exactly compelled to do because of what they're the fan base they're chasing and they keep seeing that it doesn't go over well and yet they keep doing it and i think that is the definition of ocd it's again it's it, pervasive, intrusive thoughts that come in their mind makes them anxious and they feel like they have to do something to alleviate that anxiety. We have to show we're, inclu we're inclusive and diverse. So then they do something stupid, like... Create a female clone? Create a female clone. Not well? Um, Say Lando is bisexual. I thought he or was pansexual bad. or whatever the heck. Go I don't in love care. with a robot. Or I, anything, and all this stuff. any of these other things that they've done. And if you look, the majority of people do not like this. No. Not and yet they keep doing it because they feel they need to do it. It's their duty. Because once they do it, they have that relief stage, but then it doesn't work, so they go back to the anxiety part. Yeah. Basically, again, I thought that was a very fitting diagnosis. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know. Again, I'm a therapist, so I don't rank you all. <laughs> but still, let me know because it'd be, it'd be amusing. Yeah. But yeah, that's all we got for this week. Again, let us know in the comments uh, your opinions of what we covered today. Mm -hmm. Also, let us know if you'd like us to cover more. We had a couple of topics we cut out. Again, we're open to doing more. The yeah. videos will be longer, though. So just, you know, throwing that out there. And yeah. Uh, follow my husband on Twitter at Master of the TDS. Follow me on Wattpad at GothicWriter613. Check out my stories. There will be the one to my Star Wars fan fiction linked in the description below. And yeah, and I guess that's all for this week. So please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss your weekly therapy session. Or he will charge you. Yeah, I will. And you don't want that. <laughs> that's all for this week. And we we'll will see you, see you next, time. next time. Gothic therapy, 